welcome back to day three of the Overcoming Procrastination Challenge. Today is day three, Small Steps to Clarity. I am so happy to see that you've made it to day three. Uh, if you've missed the other two videos, then there's you can go back and watch them at any time. I suggest watching it before this one, so start with day one and then go to day two. But let me get started. I'm just going to share my screen. I'm not going to to have my face and my screen during the whole thing because I noticed that it cuts off some of the screen uh, and I want you to read the text on the slide so let's see so, overcoming procrastination day three small steps to clarity on so welcome back. Uh, yesterday we looked at tips on how to start overcoming procrastination and today we're looking at you. We are getting honest with ourselves and our schedule and we will look briefly at the different factors that might be influencing the way that you work and your energy level and the way that your energy levels are. So just to recap quickly day two, um, on day two we talked about we, uh, I had tips for you, but I started with um, choosing only one goal. So whether whether that was a big goal or a small goal, choose one, and if it was a big one, break it down into steps. Um, and then I wanted you to clear up any limiting beliefs behind it, behind the reasons that you were telling yourself that you can't accomplish that goal. So writing out anything that came up for you and then rewriting the story and look at what needs to change so whether that's your environment or the time that you do your work or anything that was a factor that was kind of preventing you from taking the action and then some of the tips that we went over were time blocking avoiding loading up your to-do list dedicating a set amount of time to your goal start small so even if you just start it with 10 minutes it's something and sometimes you might find that you want to keep going and if not, then that was perfectly fine. It's just developing that habit to start and to work on your goal. The other one was eliminate, eliminate or set time for your other to-dos. So if you have housework, schedule that into your other to-dos. Eliminate distractions. So turn off your phone. Um, don't have the TV on. Go work in a quiet room. Uh, plan ahead. Uh, scheduled distractions so even scheduling your distractions so say it was Netflix say you're binge watching a show schedule it in after I'm done all my work tonight after the kids are in bed or whatever your uh, world looks like and just schedule it in for the time that you know that you're able to watch TV or you know anything that's distracting you schedule it in and then train your brain with small things first so I used an example of grabbing a glass of water uh, and then the big one, reward yourself because it will give you the motivation to work towards something so that you get to reward yourself in the end. And then there's something I wanted to bring up before we go into this slide. Uh, I wanted to bring up uh, procrastinating on something that you don't want to do. Here, I'll turn off, I'll put on my face for this one. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, so like, so there's obviously things in life that we don't want to do, but we know that we have to do. So I want to kind of touch on it a bit about uh, how to overcome this kind of procrastination. This could be for your life or your business. It could have to do with cleaning. Uh, it could have to do with taxes. You name it, just anything. So the best advice I can give on this is to start again with short increments so even just setting aside 10 minutes or 20 minutes and start doing that thing and then you might find out that you want to keep going because you want to get done or that you're actually not minding it as much as you thought you were so the next thing is changing your mindset around it um, so find something that you like about it or something that you don't seem to care so much about um, anything that you could kind of wrap your head around to get you started or to get you going with it. So I've got an example for me, bookkeeping or like, you know, just putting our numbers in the spreadsheet when we're doing our taxes. 
I always wait till like the last moment and do all 12 months at once. Right now I'm trying to get in the habit of doing it once a month and it's so much easier. But when I would have to do it all at once, it was so overwhelming. And just the idea of having to put in all those numbers exhausted me just thinking about it. So what I started to do was once I got started, I noticed, hey, this isn't so bad. Like it was good. Um, it didn't really take that much brain power to sit there and put the numbers in for me. And I don't mind numbers that much. And the things, the two things that I pointed out that I liked about it was for one, I'm really into angel numbers or number patterns. So seeing like, you know, 333 or 777, 111. Um, so I, would wait you know I didn't mind I put myself in that state where I didn't mind it because then I got to spot out angel numbers and then the other thing that I really loved was that it brought up all the happy memories so you know one month we were on vacation and I'm I kind of go back through memory lane and remember eating at that what restaurant or you know uh, enjoying that activity so I kind of switched my mindset around it and now it's not so bad or I, I mean it was good enough that I was able to get it done so that was great. Okay and then so for this next one focusing on you I chose this uh, quote because I, it's just something that obviously needs to be done. Anyways, believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable by Conor McGregor. I don't know who here is a UFC fan, but um, this is my son's favorite fighter, apparently. I think it's only because he saw him win a fight before and he usually does that. <clears throat> he goes after like the winning fighter, the winning team with hockey and stuff. But um, here, I'll turn off my face again just so I can get this whole paragraph in here. There we go. So I talked about this a little bit on day two, but I wanted to bring it up again because it's super important and it plays a part in why you might be procrastinating. We are all made uniquely. There are different factors that make us who we are, as well as outer circumstances that are out of our control that play a big impact sometimes. I'll get more into it shortly. Um, I just want to say that one thing is that all entrepreneurs and probably all humans in general experience imposter syndrome. This is another nasty cause of procrastination. Believing you aren't good enough to do that thing that you want to do or sell the product that you want to sell or even teach on that topic that you want to teach. A lot of people get in their own heads and they, and they, it's their limiting beliefs or their you know, your ego keeping you safe and telling you that you're not good enough to do this thing. So then you, you put it on pause or you wait till you get that confidence again, but really you have it in you, whatever it is that you're desiring, you desiring to do, it's, it's given to you for a reason. It's because the universe, or I don't know what you believe in, but it's, it's a desire is there because you're meant to follow through with it or because it's going to play a part leading to something else. So it is meant for you. Get out of your own head, follow with your heart, and don't let imposter syndrome win. But uh, I know it's easier said than done, and that's a whole other course. So I will just say, stay in your own lane, because this will help. I find when I focus on other people, my imposter sy syndrome kicks in at full speed. So when I stay focused on my why and focused on my goals and stop scrolling social media or watching videos from people who have been in this industry for years upon years, I uh, have more confidence to know and teach what is coming through me to teach and what I find, I know that people will, um, I know that people will benefit from. So stay in your own lane, stop following or idolizing people who have hundreds of followers or thousands of followers, figure out where you are and find the competitors who are close to to it or the next step up. So even though I'm and so step away from watching anybody, but if you want to see what others are doing, find competitors or that are in a closer range to where you are or the next level you uh, or where you want to be going. You don't want to be doing the techniques that somebody that has like a seven figure brand is doing if you're just still trying to get your 5,000 month or 10,000 month or your 50,000 month like follow something that's realistic to you and then it will help you from feeling like you're getting nowhere fast 
If you stay in your lane, you will gain more inspiration, set realistic goals, build up your confidence, and so much more. Does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so next we are looking at different modalities of our energy levels. So these are all different, a few different factors that I chose to look at that affect our energy levels. And the first one I want to start with is moon phases. Because approximately 60% of our bodies are made up of water. Don't quote me on that. It's the average answer I found. I have heard before that 70% and 80%. But uh, when I was researching this just the other day, the most average answer was 60%. But either way, our bodies are filled up with a lot of water. And our earth is made up of 70 plus, so more than 70% of water. And just think about how much effect the moon has on the on the tides when they come in, when they go out, because of the full moon or the new moon. So it isn't that hard to believe that it plays some effect on us, whether it's our mood or energy levels or whatever else. And when we look at the eight moon phase or the moon phases, there's eight of them. And there's 29 and a half days. So the different phases that we face are new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, and waning crescent. So these all have different effects. I'm not going to get into each one, but it, it really does play a part when you know the energy of each of these moon phases. Because if you feel like you can relate to them, then you can kind of find your flow in working for, with them. So for example, during the full moon, it gives us lots of energy. Uh, sometimes it's too much energy and there's all these emotions going around. And then with the new moon, it's more of a settling time where we want to go and rest, but then look over our past moon phases, set new intentions for the next new moon phase. So they, they play a part. The next is menstrual cycles. Because just like the moons, the same could be said for menstrual cycles. Learning when your peak energy week is versus the time you need to rest is a big factor in your productivity. You can either keep fighting against the flow or learn to go with it and it will make your life so much easier and you'll get a lot more done. So with the menstrual cycle, you have your menstrual phase, follicular phase, follicle, I can never say that word properly, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. So you've got four phases, and just like the moon, you know, it's during, I think it's ovulation is more like the full moon, where you have more energy, that's when you should do like speaking gigs or networking, and then menstrual phase is kind of like the new moon, where, um, that's where you just want to kind of like this girl in this image crawl up into a ball and not do as much so when you plan your goal your goal setting time around this then you can choose to do the more energy leveled stuff during your ovulation phase and then save all the you know stuff that you don't need so much brain power for or so much energy for during your menstrual phase I'm not going too much into this. This is something that I like to dig deep more into during the small steps to clarity, which I will tell you more about in a little bit. The last factor that I want to talk about today, there are other factors, but the last one I want to talk about was your circadian rhythm. So circadian rhythm is just like, usually our bodies are prone to wake up with the sun, you know, feel sleepy when it's dark. Um, we have a 24 hour biological clock but uh, I want to talk about, there's this doctor, Dr. Michael Bruce, and he came up with these different animal, he, he's called the sleep doctor, and he has a book called uh, The Power of When, and it is really, really interesting. So he didn't come up with the chronotype. All of Ostberg in 1970s first started studying it, but the sleep do doctor put animal names to the four different types. So there's a lion, a bear, a wolf, and a dolphin. And these are all based on genetic, environmental, and age factors. So depending where you fall in. I know the most average is bear, and I am a bear myself. And that's the type that works more on a 
on a regular schedule where it'd be like from seven till 10 at night or something like that. But uh, anyways, it, like if you really were to look into this, it helps you decide when you should work out, like the best time that you should work out, the best time you should uh, do your work, have your meetings, um, the best time that you should eat your meals and so much more. So the lion is more the type that you would say, I guess, as the early bird. I know there's early bird and night owl, but there's more than just two types. There's not just early bird or night owl. Here there's four. So lion is more the one that wakes up early and likes to get stuff done before everybody else. The bear I already went into. The wolf is more like the night owl, I guess, or the night one where they sleeping a little bit later and they're up at night and they're just full of energy at night. So maybe for a wolf, your better time to get work done would be in the later evening hours. Um, and then a dolphin is more of an insomniac. So they're all over the place, but there are ways, like if, even if you're a dolphin and you find it hard to sleep and there is a schedule for you. And if you can follow these, like if your lifestyle allows you to follow these, then you can be much more productive as well. Um, one second. Yeah, but when you work against your natural inner schedule, then you're always feeling permanently jet lagged. So it's always going against the flow. It's better to figure out what your natural schedule is. So even if you could map it out, just knowing what your schedule is and how you work better, like if you work, if you do better by working out in the morning, then make sure that you schedule your workout in the morning. Um, but when you, <clears throat> when you work with it, when you work with your inner schedule, you can sleep better at night. You'll feel more energized during the day and you'll unlock your hidden potential. Here, I'll go through, I'll go through what Dr. Bruce actually says for each type. I gave the gist of it, but dolphins are light sleepers and tend to wake up at the slightest noise. Lions are classic morning types in prehistoric times. These people would take the morning shift of guarding the group. Bears have an energy cycle that rises and falls with the sun. They're most productive in daylight. Wolves are evening types. They naturally stay up later and sleep later. They're just starting to drift off when lions are waking up. So somebody asked Dr. Bruce, what are some of the other surprising ways your chronotype can affect your daily life? And he states, everyone has hormones that run on a 24 hour cycle. The cycle is tied to when levels of certain hormones go up and when levels of certain hormones go down. The starting point for the cycle is when you wake up from sleeping. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's, these are just three of the factors that I want to talk about during this challenge. There are other factors that I would talk about, um, but they're a little bit more woo and I don't want to go into it too much. I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes. Um, but these include astrology signs, human design, and Enneagram numbers. So I find that any of these factors really play a part in our energy levels and how we work best and our unique selves. So the more you get to know yourself, I think the more productive that you can be and the faster you'll overcome procrastination because you'll have a better understanding of you. Which leads me into, I just wanted to talk briefly about my course slash mastermind. So small steps to clarity. I've brought it up during this three day challenge, but wanted to give you a bit more detail into, into this course and mastermind. It's a course for you. If you're a new entrepreneur or someone transitioning to build their passion business, or if you're just feeling stuck in your business with no clarity around your next steps. At this time, you can buy the course and do it yourself at your own pace at any time. It will be available mid January of 2022 and it will never close. It'll just be opened there for whoever wants to take it because I want it to benefit as many people as it can and just get them moving as you know, towards their goals as fast 
as they can with clarity without having to mess around and get distracted by researching stuff themselves or just like just having that support that they need. Um, the mastermind is a more supportive option that is three months long and it allows you to dig deeper and get more help from me and other like-minded entrepreneurs. And it has extra bonuses as well throughout the month, the three months. The mastermind is only opened up twice a year at this point. The first time I will be kicking it off is January 21st, 2022 for the lowest price it will ever be. And then if you're watching this after that, uh, you can just check out the webpage. I'll give you the link after and you'll see when the next round for the mastermind will be opened. But uh, whether you choose to purchase the course or join the mastermind, you will get to keep all the materials for life and any added materials over the year. So I can I plan on just making this my baby and optimizing it to the core and adding more bonuses, maybe more modules. So anything that's added to it, if you purchase it uh, when it's first released for the lowest price it'll ever be released for, then you will have access to everything that gets added to it later on in the years. Oh, and I like this tip I chose. Success is not a big step taken in the future. Success is a small step taken now. So on to the homework here. I will put my face back on. There we go. So the homework, time to be realistic. The next step is taking action. So off the top of your head, which chronotype do you think you are? Lion, bear, wolf, or a dolphin? There are quizzes out there. Um, feel free to message me and we can help figure out what type you are. But off the top of your head, if you had to guess, what do you think your schedule kind of falls under? And then I want you to write down the moon phase that we're currently in and read up on it and figure out what type of energy is around it and see if you can relate to this type of energy right now and at this moment. And then the next one I want you to research is, do you have a regular period? Do you know which phase you are in right now? And are you feeling this type of energy right now? So another thing to keep note of, if you have a journal, I, I have a Trello board that I just kind of, not every day, but when I it's noticeable to me that I'm feeling a little bit different or my energy levels either high or low, I like to jot down what moon phase we're in, what menstrual cycle I'm I'm in, or what I'm guessing I'm in, um, and see so that I can base my my goal mapping around that type of schedule, and it'll just make it that much more productive for me to get stuff done. And then the next step is to take your steps that you wrote out from day two, uh, from your big goal, or if it was a small goal, and uh, jot down your ideal and realistic timeline for completing each. It could just be a rough draft, just to give yourself an indication and to kind of get into that mindset of writing it out and working with that schedule. Um, but either way, map it out. Even if you don't take the last three factors that I brought up during this day, uh, just map it out and give yourself a lot of time to complete each task because something might come up, distractions, or um, so, you know, say it was to optimize your homepage on your website, um, give yourself a week. I would do that because there's different factors. You have your content, you have your media, like your images on there and any other tech technical stuff like your forms and stuff that you need to put more time into. So be realistic about your time, but map it out for the next month, wherever you're at, um, even if it's during the holidays, uh, then you want to make sure that you give yourself that time off that you know that you're going to be taking to travel or to spend time with your friends and family. So I, yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> And that's it. Thanks for joining me for this challenge. Feel free again to share anything that uh, you felt inspired by on social media and tag me at Co Coaching with Kai. So this could be on Facebook or on Instagram. And if you have any questions, as I said before, message me or email me hello at kyliehow.com. I will be happy to get back to you and to help support you in any way that I can. And...
That is all. I did want to mention, I was just going to put in the email maybe, but I'll leave you with this thought. In the end, you have to remember that you need to just start doing whatever it is that you're procrastinating at any cost and stay focused for long enough to get it done because nobody else can do that for you. So I hope you've made some progress during this challenge. If it has helped you in any way, send me a message and let me know because I'd love to celebrate any progress with you. Good luck with achieving your goals and come back to these videos at any time that you need that extra push. Bye for now.